Welcome back, folks. We're going to continue moving forward with our stoichiometry unit today by talking a little bit about limiting reactant. Now, there really isn't any change into the math that you're going to perform when you go through and complete this process. Really what it is is it's two stoichiometry problems in one. You convert them both to the product, and then whichever one is less is the actual amount that is produced. It's a pretty straightforward concept. You'll see what it looks like in problem form here in just a little bit, as well as some of the practical applications of this concept. So hopefully by the end of the video today, you should be able to understand the concept of limiting reactant, and also be able to calculate several different types of limiting reactant problems. Key vocabulary term, the only one here is limiting reactant. So that's the only one we're really going to focus on in this video. So I don't know if you remember from previous problems that we've done, but we've, when we've done stoichiometry problems, it's always given you, you know, this much amount of one reactant, and then it says the other one's in excess. Well, the, the reality is putting something in excess is not very cost efficient and isn't really efficient of the amount of materials that you have. So in industry and in pharmaceuticals, we try to use as little of the reactants as possible to produce a desired amount of product. It's cost effective and saves lots of money. So really you don't put things very frequently in an excess of another reactant. You work out exactly how much of each reactant you need in order to get the amount of product that you're looking for. So I go back to the example that we talked about at the beginning of this particular unit. Think about the bologna sandwiches. Remember, two slices of bread and two pieces of bologna make up a bologna sandwich. Well, if you have 20 slices of bread and 20 slices of bologna, you can make 10 sandwiches. If we had 20 slices of bread and 50 slices of bologna, we can still only make 10 sandwiches because the amount of bread limits how many sandwiches we can make. So we have an excess of bologna. Okay, it's not really very efficient here. If you look at the example that's given to you on your screen, we have five hot dogs and four buns. If we're trying to produce a product here of a hot dog and a bun, we can only get four of them and we'll have an excess leftover hot dog. So again, with the limiting reactant type problem, you'll be giving two starting amounts. Essentially, you convert both to the desired product that's given to you in the problem. And whichever produces the lower amount of the product is the limiting reagent. And is also the answer, that is also the correct answer. So be careful about what the question is asking for. It may ask you for how much is produced in grams. It may also ask you for what actually is the limiting reagent, in which case you would tell me the reactant that produced the lower amount of product. The other reactant would then be in excess. And there are other types of problems we can do with this. So let's take a look at a sample problem. If 4.95 grams of ethylene are combusted with 3.25 grams of oxygen, we want to know what is the limiting reagent and how many grams of carbon dioxide are actually burned. So if we look here, we're actually given two things in the problem. We're given grams of ethylene as well as grams of oxygen. The question is asking for the limiting reagent as well as how many grams of carbon dioxide are formed. So clearly we're going to have to write a balanced chemical equation for this. We're going to take both of the numbers that are highlighted and we're going to convert those grams to grams of CO2. Whichever one produces the lower amount of product is the limiting reagent and is the right answer. So that's how we're going to approach this problem. So let's go ahead and get started by writing a balanced chemical equation. So we have C2H4 plus oxygen yields carbon dioxide and water. We need to balance our equation, just like that. All right. So now that we have a balanced chemical equation, we need to start doing our stoichiometry. So let's start with 4.95 grams of ethylene. Grams on the bottom of the next step. And we're going to convert that to moles. Again, the grams, we'll get the molar mass off the periodic table. OK, 
keep going. Again, this almost should be in your head by now, but just a different way to approach a problem. Remember, we want to get this into CO2. Look at our coefficients. And now that we've set everything up correctly, now we can go through and calculate how many grams of product we would get from that reactant. And we're going to get 15.5 grams of CO2. Okay. Now, again, that's half of it. We need to do the other conversion next. So let's start with that one. grams into moles, and that's O2, okay, again, we follow the same steps, moles of oxygen, we want moles of CO2, again, look at our coefficients of our equation, Okay. Again, following all those steps, nice and easy. Um, remember that grams is found on the periodic table. Anytime we convert moles to grams, moles is always one. These are rules that I have talked about quite extensively. We get an answer of 2.98. Okay. So how many grams are formed? We have 15.5 and 2.98. So remember, whichever one is lowest is correct. So this is the right answer here. All right. And then it also asks you what's the limiting reagent. Remember, the limiting reagent is what produces that. So oxygen is my limiting reagent. Okay. So again, it's just like two stoichiometry problems in one. Just perform them, get them to the end. Whichever one is lowest is correct, and whatever produced the lowest is limiting. Now, for a fancier problem, if I had asked how much of the excess reagent is left over, you could actually calculate that. So as you see, this reactant here is the one that's in excess. So if I want to know how much of that is used, I would actually take my answer, 2.98 grams of CO2, and convert it back into C2H4. That would let me know how much of that is used and then I could figure out how much is actually left over from the reaction. You'll have a couple of problems that look like that just to take it a, a little bit of an extra step. So let's move on to one more practice problem. So with this particular reaction, it is already balanced for you. We just need to do our stoichiometry. So here we're given 35.6 grams of NaOH, 30.80 grams of H3PO4, and we want to know how many grams of Na3PO4 are formed. So we're going to perform both stoichiometry problems here and figure out what the limiting reactant is. So let's start with the first one. We've got 35.60 grams of NaOH. grams of NaOH into moles. Which is 40 grams per mole. Moles of NaOH on the bottom of the next step. We're going to convert that to moles of Na3 PO4. Look at our balanced equation. Get those numbers again from the coefficients of the balanced equation. And we'll go one last step here.
Again, we find our molar masses on the periodic table. All right, we're going to do our math here and get how many grams we'd produce from this reaction. And what we get, using correct significant figures, of course, is 48.64 grams. All right. Now, I'm going to go ahead and erase some of this to give us some room, but keep in mind that that is from NaOH. Okay, we're going to do the next problem with the next one and go from there. So let's start again. We're going to have 30 grams, 30.80, my mistake, H3, PO4, and grams in the bottom of the next step, convert to moles. Again, we find the molar mass information on the periodic table. Whatever's on top of the previous step goes in the bottom of the next. Remember, we want to get that into sodium phosphate. Use the mole ratio here. And our last step is going to be here. So now we just do our math to get our answer. And here we get 51.52 grams of our product. So again, we need to look how many grams are actually produced. It's going to be the one that is less. And what is the limiting reactant? Well, what produced the lower amount? That is sodium hydroxide. And that's all there is to it. So continue working on these. Think about these types of problems as you move forward. Nothing too different here, just another type of stoichiometry problem we can complete. So hopefully now you have a good idea of how these types of problems work. Again, limiting reactant problems just simply limit how much product can be made in a chemical reaction. That refers to the limiting reactant itself. What you need to do is complete both stoichiometry problems and whichever product lower is the correct answer. And the reactant that produces the lower amount of product is considered the limiting reactant. So keep all these things in mind as you go through and complete these types of problems. Hopefully you got the learning targets for today. I think I've taken up enough of your time with two sample problems here. But continue to work hard, continue to push yourselves, and you will do just fine. As always, if you have any questions, let me know. And uh, have a great day, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.